So in September of 2010, I got the green light from the doctors that me and Eric can try to conceive and we were really excited that uh, we got the green light for that and the also good news was that I've been in remission for um, a year now with uh, them looking at all my MRIs and blood work and yada 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 all that stuff so once we came back here to Frisco I uh, had a meeting with my doctor and uh, my primary care doctor let me rephrase that and he referred me to an OBGYN up here and uh, I met her in uh, about right before patient day actually and we started doing all the um, fertility tests. The reason we started doing the fertility tests, um, one is we wanted to make sure that I was okay and Eric was okay and that we don't have the whole timeline with the uh, OBGYN, OBGYN, me and Eric had a consultation and we wanted to reevaluate the plan because one, four cycles, that's about four months of me not being on meds and I felt like I was a ticking time bomb and I wanted to be a little bit more aggressive and also I was getting more concerned of why wasn't this working um is is there something wrong and and, and they haven't found it yet um there was just so many things going through my head and the emotional roller coaster of every month going through it was just I, I uh, it was just really, really, really hard, the ups and downs and hoping and hoping and you really think it was going to take that month and then, you know, of course it didn't and then I'd be heartbroken and crying up a storm. Why, 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 why isn't this happening? <clears throat> so after the fourth time, um, we had a meeting with the OBGYN and we also had a meeting with my primary care doctor and she referred us to go see an infertility doctor down in Denver um, to see um, what she would suggest and if there's maybe any you know maybe consider in vitro so that's what we did um, Eric and I went down to a fabulous place down in Denver and met a fabulous doctor and had like a two and a half hour consultation with her of about um, my disease and everything I've been through and why haven't I got pregnant yet. So um, the thing of it all of it is just I think the most stressful thing is, is, is um, being patient. <laughs> I don't have a lot of patience, so, and, um, it seems like it's been a year, but really, you know, it, it has, it, it feels like it's just been taking forever, um, so, with all of this stuff that I've been through trying to get pregnant with the insemination and, and, um, uh, going through all these fertility tests and um, we got the green light that we can do in vitro. They think that would be the best possible way for me to get pregnant quickly. And, uh, you know, I'm very nervous about all of this and I'm also just very, very scared since um, I might be the first NMO patient that does in vitro. So, um going today with our, our um, this was our second consultation today, um, we got all the blood tests back, they ran more panels and did more things and everything looks great on my end. Um, the only concerning part is that, you know, my blood level, my CD19 and 20 are starting to rise, but I am on prednisone and the doctors are monitoring me very closely. Um, anything new, I have to go to the doctor right away, um, any new symptom, or if something's just not feeling right, they told me they rather hear too much from me than not at all, which totally makes sense. Um, but today it really sink, sunk in with me meeting with, um, the doctor of this whole in vitro process. And I knew it was going to be kind of intense, but I didn't really think that much into it I guess maybe that's it I have no I have no idea but um we spent about two hours 
three, almost three hours there again today of um, what needs to happen and and what's going on. Um, kind of a short condensed version of the, of the, of the in vitro process and, and, and what's going to be coming up and what we need to do. So between now, which is, you know, middle part of April till June, I am going to be one busy girl at the doctor's office um, between <laughs> doing the in vitro thing and keeping up on NMO and um, all my other normal doctor stuff I have to do. Um, it's going to be a quite interesting thing. We do go back on the 28th. I have to do um, two more tests. They're going to um, do um, a stick a camera inside of me and look at all my cervix and uterus and kind of, I guess, map it out <laughs> for when we do the um, in vitro thing. And also they're going to take us to the lab and show us the embryos and uh, the embryo lab and the people that do that and also uh, meet some of the nurses and um, some other things they kind of have to go over with us um, to kind of get us prepped up. So what we're looking at is um, I will have to start the pill here shortly next week and then beginning in the middle of May I will have to start, um, no I'm sorry, the middle of May I will have to start giving me hormone shots and then the weekend, uh, the week between the week of Memorial weekend and June 1st is when they'll take out the eggs. And that's the process that really scares me. Um, that area is so sensitive as it is. And um, them going in there and taking out eggs, I'm sorry, that just sounds painful. It doesn't sound very pleasant at all and um, they do recommend that I stay down in Denver for a while and um, so me and Eric are planning on me being down there for um, a week or, or, or more depending on how things are going and everything um, but you will see me um, video logging throughout it throughout this whole process and um, my emotions, how I'm feeling, what I'm doing, um, what my whole thinking process of this craziness that's going on, and um, how with the NMO, it's taking these mega do dosages of horm hormones, I know that's been a controversy, is this hormones related to NMO, I know that's one of the things that the doctors are trying to figure out so this is going to be interesting and also um, being on prednisone I, I, I have to continue to be on prednisone from here on out until I give birth and that's our, we're really hoping and praying and hoping we're very lucky that that and it's only going to take one time through um, in vitro because um, this process is, is kind of long and two, um, expensive, and three, just the emotional roller coaster. So um, they dis they they suggested I go go see a therapist through all of this. Um, I'm kind of teetering back and forth about that. I don't know. I'll see how I feel. They did recommend I start acupuncture, and I already have, so that's really good. They really think acupuncture is a really good thing while you're doing in vitro. It really helps relax your body and stuff, so, um, I'm definitely going to keep up on that, um, we're going to try to exercise more, and also just eat a little bit more healthier before, um, they take the, uh, before they take the eggs, because, um, once they do take the eggs, I have to be bed bedridden for a couple days, and then also when they put them back inside me, so, um, that's what's going on so far, um, but the doctor, she felt very confident that it's only going to take this one time. And um, I'm hoping. I really, really, really am hoping. And, and she's a wonderful doctor. And she's really taken the time to learn about NMO. And 
the, that was the one thing that impressed me the most about her is when we first had our first consultation um, when she took us back to her office and we sat down she said you know I've looked up your, your disease I researched it a little bit but I still have a little a bit of questions and I was totally blown away I was like you know what NMO is and you actually took the time wow I was like no hardly any doctors do that anymore and um, she was a terrific terrific lady and uh, she's very smart she's <laughs> really really smart and so um, today when I saw her I gave her a press kit folder of the Guthy Jackson Foundation of how Victoria started the foundation and a little bit more about NMO and everything that's kind of been through um, the press and everything and she loved that packet actually and uh, she thought it was really smart and um, of them to do that so people can be more aware of the foundation and so um, between her and all the other doctors watching me and everybody being on the same game plan and that's the key is all the doctors are talking to each other and everybody's on the same page and everybody knows what I'm doing and I think that's what's really going to help out is that everybody's communicating with each other. Um, how am I feeling? With my CD19 and 20 this month, um, my CD, my 19 was at 11% and my 20 was at 95%. So, um, actually I've been okay. Um, I'm surprised I don't feel a lot worse than I've been feeling. I think maybe since I'm doing acupuncture and I'm really getting back into Pilates, that's helping. Um, do I have still my bad days? Absolutely. I'm battling fatigue. Mm, some days are better than other. My sleeping's horrible. That's the one thing that I just can't um, get under control or get um, consistent is um, my sleeping is just I don't know what to do about it. I was on Ambien and then we stopped it because I started having vivid dreams and the dreams were just too vivid. I was like, whoa, this is this is kind of freaking me out. So, um, we'll have to see. Um, we'll take it day to day. I still, so the first of every month I go in, I get my blood drawn by my primary care doctor. They call, um, they call me and give me my results and then they fax it to the other doctors that want to know about it. And then that's how we all kind of figure out what's going on with me. Um, we do have kind of a plan into effect if I think I'm going to have an attack, um, we're going to have to do, uh, I'll have to do a plasma exchange, but they told me I can't do it through my cent uh, central line, I would have to do it through a peripheral line. Um, they just due to infection just right before in vitro, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed, everything crossed, I don't have something really bad happen right before in vitro so we don't have to pull the plug. Um, so you'll be seeing me video logging throughout this and at the very end it's going to be one, hopefully one big beautiful story with a positive pregnancy test at the end.